Okay, today we're going to jump off of my last video and we're going to make some of those basic wave shapes and recreate their spectra using FM synthesis. I mean, we did it on operator, it's an FM synth anyways, it only felt right. So just a quick review of FM synthesis. A carrier frequency is affected by the modulator amplitude at the modulator frequency. It's common to say it's modulated by the modulating frequency. Yes, but it's modulated by the current value being returned by the modulator signal, which changes at the modulator frequency. So it, do, it is affected by the modulator frequency, but it is changed what is multiplied by the frequency of the carrier signal is multiplied by the amplitude of the modulator signal, it's a, which, which is affected by the rate of change of that amplitude is affected by the frequency of the modulator. So don't get it confused. It is the amplitude coming out of it that's affecting it. We can see in this green here, so we got blue is modulator, red is the carrier, and right now it's in like a low frequency, right? You see all these quick amplitude changes and how long it takes to sweep through the amplitude changes of the modulator. It's a low frequency modulator or oscillator. And as it goes up in terms of amplitude, high here, high here, oh, it's low. And so it's a small amplitude, you know, you get the idea. But that also happens with frequency too. So remember if a wave shape gets more squished, the cycles get shorter that means it's a higher frequency. And so as we get a high modulating amplitude affecting the carrier, we can see they get more high right there, really squished together right there in the wave shape. We, when it goes low, they become more spaced out, which is a lower frequency. This would sound like vibrato or like a sliding sound. It's a vibrato at low frequencies. FM synthesis occurs as we leave the range of LFO because we are now perceiving it as a frequency. It's in the audio rate range. If we were in super collider, we'd call it that. It generates sidebands based on the ratio of the carrier to the modulator. So that ratio becomes very important. We could go into a lot of depth, but for today, we're going to deal with very nice integer ratios. So let's talk about what sidebands are and how we can calculate them. It's very easy. A sideband n is equal to the carrier plus the modulator times n. Carrier frequency, that is, and modulator frequency. So the frequency of the sideband n, sideband 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever, or negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we're only going to deal with positive today, is equal to the carrier plus the modulator times n. So here we can see sideband 1 would be equal to the carrier plus the modulator times 1, so just plus the carrier or plus the modulator. Sideband 2 is equal to the carrier plus the modulator frequency times 2. Sideband 3 is carrier plus modulator times 3. Like yada, yada, yada. Okay, we could go on. Let's give you an example. Oh, here's a nice picture too. And as you see, it, it what I just described is on the right half of that diagram, of that center fundamental. The center right here is the fundamental frequency. And what I was just describing is carrier plus the modulator carrier plus two times the modulator frequency and three times yada 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 goes negative as well. Uh, we won't deal with that today. So here we see some side bands and let's look at the equation and relationships that would produce it. Carrier equals 400 hertz, the modulator equals 200 hertz. All right, carrier is 400 plus 200 times one, 600. That's the first side band. Remember, the fundamental is 400 in this case. Sideband 2, 400 plus 200 times 2, because it's sideband 2, and that is equal to 800 hertz. That's an octave. Ooh, starting to sound familiar, huh? Now 400 plus 600, 400 plus 800. So it's giving us more detailed spectra, even just this simple 0 0.5 ratio, which we would call, because um, the modulator is half that of the carrier. It's giving us some spicy harmonics, but let's use it to recreate those simple harmonics of the basic wave shapes we talked about last week. Basic wave shapes, right? Let's, cut, let's say the fundamental is 100 hertz. Here's the diagram I think I showed you last week. We see a triangle and a square have odd order harmonics, the square uh, dying off at a lower rate, 
See how it extends farther with higher amplitude in the upper harmonics. Then we have the sawtooth wave with odd and even, and the pulse wave with odd and even as well. And if we not talking about the amplitudes there, to recreate that perfectly is kind of tough, but we can still do it with FM. Just looking at where they have harmonic energy. 100 hertz, 300 hertz, 500 hertz, because it is the fundamental times the harmonic integer number. If it wasn't an integer, it wouldn't be harmonic. And triangle and square are odd order harmonic. It would be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, continuing on with odd order harmonics until it becomes inaudible. Sawtooth is odd and even, same with the pulse. I'm guessing this is closer to an impulse than it is a pulse with modulated pulse wave, uh, square wave. 100 hertz, 200, 300, 400, 500, odd and even. So how can we recreate this with the side bands of FM synthesis? Let's do odd order side bands first. So let's say our carrier is 100 hertz and the modulator is 200 hertz. That's interesting, the modulator is twice that of the carrier. You can do that, there's no reason you couldn't. Sideband one is equal to 100 plus 200, essentially. Sideband two is equal to 100 plus 200 times two. 100 plus 200 times three, 100 plus 200 times four. And we are getting 300, 500, 700, 900. That's the same as the odd order harmonics of a square or a triangle wave. Odd and even order sidebands, that of the pulse or the sawtooth wave. Let's say we have a carrier of 100 hertz and a modulator of 100 hertz. 100 plus 100, 100 plus 200, 100 plus 300, 100 plus 400. That's a lot like how we figured out harmonics in the first place. 100 for the fundamental, 200, 300, 400, 500. So it really creates the same spectrum as these basic wave shapes. And this is by far not the limitation of FM synthesis, but maybe it'll give you an easier concept of it if it's been unfamiliar to you. Let's go to Ableton now and test it out. Okay, so I have a real saw and an FM saw. I have a real square and an FM square, digitally generated through operator. So this first track we're doing is going to be a simple saw wave. It's not having any FM synthesis going on right now. I just chose the sawtooth wave from the wave selector here, 64 bit. All right, and as expected, we have 100 Hertz, 200 Hertz, 300 Hertz, 400 Hertz. It really looks like a sawtooth, doesn't it? Now let's hear it. Thick and rich, sounds like sawtooth. Now let's hear my FM version. Okay, it sounds a little bit like it. Now if, I bet you if I tweak this, which is the modulating coefficient. So the mod, this is the modulator here. This would be the carrier. We see I set it to 100 hertz and 100 hertz down here. And as I increase the coefficient of the modulator, it starts, it, it fills out those harmonics of the sawtooth, but not in as even of a way. Look at, compare them, how nicely descending that is to the FM saw, kind of pumps through it a little bit. And if I take it down, well, we lose those upper harmonics, but it retains that more, well, it's not really linear, but it, it's descending in a direction. It doesn't spike again later. Let's do that with a square wave now. So here's the real square. Real square, it's digital, but you can see I selected it here. Oops. Right here. And what we would expect is a peak of energy, a form and frequency at the fundamental, obviously 100 hertz, and then we would skip 200 hertz and we'd go to 300 hertz. Yep, 300 hertz. And we'd skip 400, we'd go to 500 hertz. 500 hertz, I'm looking down here in the bottom left. And then we would go to 700 hertz, skipping 600, and so on and so forth. Now with FM, by giving the modulating frequency, by setting it to be two times that of the carrier, we are gonna create those odd order harmonics because it's not doing every, har every octave. 
which is what's happening when it's a sawtooth, when we're generating the sawtooth through FM, by setting the modulator in the carrier to the same frequency by adding on multiples of it, you're just doing integer multiples of the fundamental. That only works because they're equal. If they're not equal, it starts to get funky. Uh, we need a whole video for that. Now, this is double the frequency of the fundamental. So it's skipping that octave. It's skipping that first harmonic. It's going 1, 3, 5, because it's 100 plus 200. And then we're at 100 plus 400, 100 plus 600. And in doing so, let's hear it. Uh, let's hear the real square again one more time. And the FM square. Oops. Let me crank up that level. And as I really start to push it, I think we're honestly aliasing. Or I, I'm not sure why it gets so inharmonic like that. I might have to do some more research because you'd think it would just work, right? Maybe it's because these are exact numbers I've entered in here, but yeah, that's an interesting one. But suffice to say, maybe you don't want to know the exact math behind it. It gets a little spicier and a little bit more gong-like is the term people use a lot, or like a bell. It's inharmonic. It's not just those harmonic integers. So that's something that a lot of additive synths kind of lack. And I guess they have fine tune, so you can do like a nice chorus effect or you can modulate it. But these inharmonic sounds that come from FM synthesis are, you can't really get them anywhere else. So if you want to start with FM synthesis and it has intimidated you, I would recommend starting with something like this. Like just recreate things that you already know how they sound. Uh, let me show you real quick. What's cool about FM is that you can really control the spectrum over time. So I just changed the envelope of the modulator. Let's hear what that sounds like now. That was a good one. Wow. So it goes up. It, this is affecting the level of it. It's essentially going up and then down to the sustain level. And if we start to make it inharmonic, it gets real gross. Yeah, that's a good one. And then especially if we took this down to like 50 or 50 hertz, let's say. Okay. I'm getting happy. Let's drive it a little bit. OSR with some drive. Oh shit, we're sound designing now. So use FM synthesis. It's not just for DX7s. That actually I learned in looking up for this video is phase modulation, not frequency modulation. I felt so betrayed. I better stop here because I could go for days. So check out your FM. Don't neglect it.